Cuphead DLC dropped a couple weeks ago, and it's a masterpiece, though remarkably short. You know, massive self-flagellating weirdo that I am, I actually really like hard indie game dick. Dicks? DLCs. When quote-unquote hard indie games come out, and video games journalists, with all the skill and ability of a paralyzed quadruple amputee with really bad ha eye coordination, start calling them the Dark Souls of this and that, you can almost picture the devs laughing to themselves, thinking, wait till they get to the path of pain, or wait till they realize that you have to beat entire levels without dying to get the golden berries. But after searching for their own game titles on YouTube and realizing that speedrunning is a thing, and watching dedicated people beating their really hard this is literally Dark Souls challenges in less time than it would take a normal person to blink, and with bananas instead of controllers, and while balancing an angry cat on their head, they started working on DLC that can only be described as payback. Celeste, taking a really difficult and previously unused mechanic and implementing it all over levels, which difficulty would make anyone working at IGN pull out Cheat Engine faster than Usain Bolt riding on a nitrous oxide powered cheetah, but mainly Hollow Knight with its boss rush mode that has over 40 bosses and you have to restart the whole thing if you die at any point, which is the kind of challenge that I really like and I find refreshing and rewarding. But instead of stopping there, they added a mode where you can fight the same 40 plus boss rush but with reduced health, reduced mana pool, one tenth of your damage and with no items equipped and while balancing an angry cat on your head. So after that I was hoping for the Cuphead DLC to bash my head in so hard I'd be reverse birthed out of my own ass but instead the Cuphead DLC was not only surprisingly easy but it also made the vase game retroactively easier as well. Seems like otaku reviewers are making enough money to start bribing game devs. Now, I still cream my pants over the amazing boss design in this game though, but we will leave that topic for another video. Today we will go over all the new bosses and how to beat them with the highest grade. First thing you should do is equip the magic cookie and go into the chalice tutorial to get a free coin. Then go behind the shop and get the second free coin. Hopefully you don't need any help this far, but if you do, you probably work for some of the previously mentioned websites, which means you need more help than I can give you. Right after this, I recommend you go to the ladder straight down. This is how you earn money in the DLC, so we will get all of these out of the way first, so we are able to purchase three items that are core to making the main bosses a whole lot easier. You won't be able to fight all the chest bosses at once, but I will still cover them all in one go. You can't use weapons or relics for this, so we're going in raw. First come the pawns. These guys are quite straightforward. They jump down, you parry their heads. After a bit you will notice that the headless spawns that you can't parry anymore jump down way more often than the ones that you still have to kill. Don't panic, focus on the top half of the screen and look out for a little murder dance. Stay with me, my own the wild, they do this before they jump down at you. After landing, they will always run at you, which means that the bottom half of the screen is pretty predictable. So keep your focus on the top half of the screen and as soon as the pink ones start dancing, get ready to parry. Then the horse, which is one of my favorite bosses from the DLC. He might seem quite hard at first, but for every one of his attacks you can hit him back at least 3 or 4 times, so let's go over his moves. Attack 1 is Surprise Colonoscopy, where he thrusts his sword upwards. He first crouches down, and this is your cue to jump on his head, parry twice and dash out. If you're fast enough you can fit 3 parries instead. Attack 2 is the charge. This is the only one as far as I know where you can parry 4 times, but it is extremely hard. Unless you're speedrunning, go for 2 or 3. He positions like this, then charges, and after he's done, he pants for a bit. The proper reaction to this move is walk away if you're close, then jump, parry once as he charges beneath you, then if you're going for the safer 2 hits, just land and as he pants get your second parry in. But if you're going for the big dick option, after the first parry, dash towards him, then parry a second time, then a third. And if you're going for the speed run, jump on him just as he starts the animation, then dash, parry and parry 2 additional times. Attack 3 is the not surprise colonoscopy, where he crouches but instead of trying to ram his sword up an unsuspecting rectum, he does a really big swipe and then pants. You need to get good at recognizing the difference between these two tells, so you don't fall for the bait. If he's doing this, you need to either walk or dash away, depending on how close you were and just parry twice as he pants. Or if you're a giga chad, just jump on top of him really fast, parry, dash away and parry twice as he pants for 3 hits. You might be able to fit a 4th here if you're fast enough, but I just couldn't manage it. If you're not sure if he's doing 1st or 3rd attack, just walk away and don't go for a hit, sometimes it's better to play it safe. After this, the bishop is really simple. It's an attrition battle, so as long as you don't choke, you should be fine. He just glides around in a fixed pattern. He shoots spells that after some time move towards you really slowly. When he's pink, you can parry him. When he's not, you need to touch the candles to put them out. Take this fight slow, make note of the pattern he's following each time he spawns and get out of his way. 
The rook is really interesting actually. There are two approaches you could take. First one, if you want to lose, you could try to parry every single pink head that comes your way and try to rush him down in about 15 seconds, which is deeply satisfying and really fucking dumb. If you want to beat this boss consistently, just play it safe, focus mostly on dodging and when you see a pink head that is safe to go for, go for it. Then follow it to make sure you hit it a second or third time so it connects with the boss. Keep in mind that many of the heads that seem that they won't connect actually do and don't be afraid to lose a head that you are trying to use to forego taking damage. Also, you can duck underneath these sparks and the position where you parry the heads matters. So try to parry them in an arc towards the boss to cover the most distance. So don't get greedy and you'll be giving this boss head in no time. I hate myself. Last chess boss is by far the hardest. The queen only has two attacks. First, she spawns a tower of flines, as queens are known to do. And second, she throws money at you, which I find quite unrealistic. Now, the lions you parry and the money you avoid. If she only has two moves, why is this boss so hard? Well, like for a tall man with a crew to urethra, aiming the cannon is a bit of a hassle. What I recommend is the first half of the fight, that would be all the way up until you've hit her five times, play really aggressively and try to aim the cannons at her head. This will get you good at timing them with her movement and will serve as great if frustrating practice. Then after that, play more and more passive as the fight goes on, only going for safer and safer cannons until one finally connects. The main attack to watch out for when playing safe is the lions. They get pretty fast later into the fight and if you don't have enough space, you might not be able to jump for the parry before they hit you. Before we move to the main bosses, if you want to do the chess gauntlet that becomes available after you beat all bosses for the achievement, my recommendation is that you try to beat each individual boss at least once without losing any health, and focus on the queen the most since she's the hardest and the last boss. There's two things you can do to make this DLC a cakewalk if you're really struggling, and I want to mention these before we move on. First is that if you spin in place, you can get up to 9 HP for your next fight if it's not an expert. Surely a clause on the contract that Dev signed when taking that big bag of game reviewer money. The second one does require you to kill a couple bosses from DLC, but since I will cover how to kill them all with an S rank, I want to cover this first since it's relevant to the explanations later on. So let's talk about the Broken Relic, which is a really on point name actually. You buy it from Pigment for one gold coin. After this, we will head to the Moonshine Mob and the Crazy Cow bosses. With both of these down, we can now access this cemetery, and if we equip the Broken Relic, we can interact with the Tombstones. But you have to solve a puzzle to activate them. Now, I can't give you the answer because it's randomized for each player, but what you have to do is go talk to these guys on the podium. For me, the guy that came in first said something with right, the guy that came in second something with left, and the one that came in third something with down left. So the tombstones that I have to interact with are right, left and bottom left in that order. If you did this right, the middle tomb is now glowing and you can interact with it to fall asleep on it, which starts a boss fight. This boss doesn't give a rank, so we won't go over deep strategy for it, since all we have to do is beat it. The gimmick for this fight is that there's an angel and a devil. Whichever you're looking at will always be the devil, whichever you're not is always the angel. The angel can't damage you, but the devil can. And this gimmick comes into play mainly with the pillars, which you need to turn around for them to become water and not damage you. My recommendation here is that you ignore the gimmick entirely, equip the smoke bomb and just dodge through the pillar, and avoid every projectile as if it was going to damage you. We will talk about weapons and some relics later, but for this boss I recommend you use the crack shot, which you can buy from the pick shop. Once you've beaten the secret boss, the relic activates and you recharge with 16 points by beating bosses with the relic equipped. Each boss gives a different amount of points, so here's the table. You can't use the same boss twice, but you can pick all of the bosses that were the easiest for you in the base game to get this done. Now, what does this do? So, first, your weapon cycles into a random weapon each time you stop shooting. Second, every eighth dash is a smoke bomb dash. Third, every eighth parry is a whetstone parry, which if you didn't know is the axe parry that deals damage, and also I don't blame you because it's fucking useless. Fourth, your third, sixth and tenth parry regenerate health. Fifth, your supercharge is increased by 0%, and sixth, you start at 1 HP. Most of these effects change as you gain points, so here's another table. If you want to complete this relic with bosses in the DLC only, you will have to beat all of them with it and I will give advice on how to do that when I talk about each individual boss. After acquiring all 16 points, the relic turns into the Divine Relic, which, like a drunk bear in a unicycle, is extremely unbalanced. It gives you the full benefit of Smoke Bomb and Heart Ring, the two best relics in the game, as well as Whetstone, which might as well not be there, and a stronger version of the Coffee Relic. It also doesn't start you at 1 HP anymore, but still keeps cycling your weapons all the same. This guide will assume that you're not using this for the sake of challenge, but feel free to make the game easier on yourself by using this. Just know that I will personally judge you.
You're just a chicken. Chip, 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 chip. Now, one last quick thing before we move to the main bosses. Let's talk items. From all the new weapons and relics introduced, only two stand out to me. If you're not a goldfish, you might remember me recommending the crack shot two minutes ago. And that is because it is like Bob Dylan holding a concert inside of a Jolly Rancher. Fucking sweet. The crack shot is crap. It's the most broken weapon in the game, and we will use it a lot. What this does is fire a projectile, and if it misses, it splits and it fires a second smaller projectile straight at the enemy. So if you directly hit the enemy, this is just a regular shot that deals 10.5 damage. To put that in perspective, the roundabout only does 8.5 and the lover does just a little bit more at 11.6. Now, the lover, despite dealing more damage, has the downside of being fucking useless and the roundabout has the downside that you can't really fire it in the direction you're looking. So naturally, the crack shot has a disadvantage that if you miss, it actually just auto aims for you and hits anyways. Yeah, sure, the auto aim shot deals less damage though at 6.78, but the chaser does the same thing without the versatility and only deals 2.85. On top of this, the EX move fires a small planet that acts as a small turret, automatically attacking the boss and you can parry it to shoot it at the enemy, which is even better than it sounds, since being able to create a stationary parryable projectile is almost as good as making your own platforms. And on top, on top of that, this has amazing synergy with the hard ring. Extremely smooth segue. In the previous segment, I compared this to the smoke bomb. Now, if you played Cuphead before the DLC, you might remember the smoke bomb as the only useful relic in the game. So when I say we're gonna be using the hard ring over the smoke bomb, that speaks volumes to how broken this is. This relic lets you recover health with your first, third, and sixth parry which basically means that if you parry six times in a fight, you actually have twice the amount of base health to work with. Also, the planet turret from the super attack on the crack shot counts towards this. The combination of this relic and this weapon makes the game so much easier, and we will be using both of them for all the bosses moving forward. So first up, Moonshine Mob. Phase 1, use the crack shot, try to aim it and hit the first part of the projectile whenever possible. It is possible to run out of time and fail the S grade because of that in this fight, so don't delay any of the phases. Our goal in this first phase is to hit the big spider with the first part of the projectile as much as possible. Our secondary goal is parry as many of these pink small clouds as possible. The pink clouds are kinda hard to parry and you will need to learn to time your jumps to parry them properly in this arena. It's not terrible if you don't get any parries in the first stage, but it's better if you do since it will give you more health to work with. Other than that, you can't touch the bombs, there's a delay between the moment you touch them and when they deal damage, and try not to hit the policemen in the corners, because you might kill them before they get to fire the only parryable projectile on this stage. When phase 2 starting, watch out for the free parries on the barrels. Switch to the roundabout and fire off screen. The shots will come back and hit the B. As soon as the music beams turn yellow, swap to the crack shot and move with them to not get hit. The crack shot should kill any enemies on the top and bottom rows, but watch out not to run into the B while you're focusing on dodging the beams. I also recommend using your super here if you have it fully charged. When this phase is over, she runs to a corner and then to the phonograph and this can still damage you so be really careful not to be in her way last is the hardest phase and therefore it is best if you can get here without getting hit we will use the crack shot try to aim it when possible and stay on the bottom of the screen the anteater will attempt to lick you without your consent stick to the opposite side he's attacking from to avoid sexual harassment when he goes all in assault mode on the bottom platform we will file several hr complaints by pairing as much as possible so we can heal and get the three pairs required for the s grade dodging the bug balls can get pretty hard mainly because in expert they have a lot of health and you might have to deal with two of them at a time, but stay calm, dodge, and focus on the anteater. Once you take him down, you just have to kill the boss. Aim up and dodge his low projectiles until he's down. Getting an S on this might take a while because of the time limit. If you're not making the time limit, try using the converse shot for the last phase instead and see if you do better with that, but roundabout and crack shot work for me. If you're trying to get the kill for the cursed relic, same things apply. Try to get your parries for your additional hit point in the first stage, and if I was you, I would not do this boss first. Get a couple of charges on the easier bosses before. When the cursed relic is fairly charged, it starts you with 2 HP instead of 1, and parries heal you more often. If you can manage it whenever you cycle into a good weapon, like the crack shot, roundabout, converge, and sometimes spread, try to stay on them. But don't get hit just to keep your weapon. And this applies to any boss you're trying to beat with a cursed relic. Second is Winchester the Cow. Her first phase has a lot going on, so let's break it down. First attack, she shoots snake oil at you. Because of this attack, we're going to want to hang on the left side of the screen, since the first part of the attack can hit you otherwise. Do not pay attention to the first part of this attack. It is only a distraction, and there is a lot of other things you want to keep your eyes on. The only part of this attack that matters is when the snakes shoot at you. Make sure you dodge them. Second attack are the flying horses that come from the left side of the screen. You shouldn't try to kill them. Since there will be a lot going on most of the time, try to ignore these for the most part until they are past half of the screen. As they get 
get closer to the right edge of the screen, pay more and more attention to them because they are about to shoot at you. Sometimes the projectile is variable, parry it if possible. Third is the worst attack by far. A bird will drop a TNT stack and upon hitting the ground it will fire several projectiles upwards. If you're close to the ground, you can stay on the left or right side of the stack while it fires. Otherwise, try to stay as far above it as possible and evade the projectiles. For the last attack on this phase, she pulls out a lasso and brings forth a cactus. This attack is really slow and predictable, just move out of the way. The only relevant thing for this attack is that you can fire a piercing bullet at her when she's about to do the attack and if you do it right, it will hit her several times doing a lot of damage and shortening this stage considerably. For phase 2, she starts sucking hard, but not in a good way. Projectiles will start coming from behind you. Stay in this area. If you're further back, you can see the projectiles in time to dodge, and if you're closer to her, the gaps are not big enough for you to not get hit. Second part of phase 2 has her shooting safes into the sky. They fall on you and shoot a secondary projectile upon hitting the ground. At least one of these will be parable, so get it if possible. If you want to make this face shorter, you can use your special on her while she crouches down since her hitbox is a lot wider and you deal a lot more damage that way. Phase 3 can be a bit hard. Watch out for where the opening on the beam cans are facing and focus on dodging them. She will try to hit you with her meat, and I'm starting to see a pattern in these bosses. The meat has a really wide spiraling pattern. You can either move to the top or bottom half of the screen to be as far from it as possible, or you can wait for it to get close and as soon as you see a gap, move forward past it. If you struggle a lot with this phase, you can spam your bullet special at her. Her hitbox is very wide here, and it will make this go by a lot faster. But I don't recommend you fire more than 2 or 3 specials, because you should try to get to phase 4 with the special fully charged. Phase 4 isn't really hard, but it is really late in the fight and it is certainly the one that you will get to practice the least. And it is really easy to choke on, because it isn't particularly easy either. The peppers are pretty slow, so you just want to focus on the holes in the sausage strings and plan on how you're going to get through them on each pass. Other than that, focus on surviving and either spam your supers with the piercing bullet or charge it to full a second time and that should finish it. In regards to the cursed relic, if you're going for DLC bosses only, you should probably start with this one, since the weapon side Cycling barely affects you because you only have two weapons, and you have plenty of opportunities to parry. If you get good enough at the first two stages, this boss should be fairly manageable. Third boss is the Hot Dog. Yes, I said it. MDHR knew what they were doing, continuing the sonic history of putting titties on anthropomorphic animals, guaranteeing that this character's rule 34 will have a page count on the three digits, and thus proliferating the cycle of kids that grow up with weird ideas about animals, giving their house pets weird looks, and growing up into the kind of person for which putting on a $10,000 animal suit is the only way they can get off. Oh right, got it. This boss is another one that you could fail to get the S grade in because of the timer, so try to aim your crack shot if you're going for the perfect score. Phase 1 doesn't have much going on. You're in a little plane that you can move by standing either on the left or right wing. The further you go on either side, the faster the plane moves. I usually try to keep it in the middle. There will be a little dog periodically throwing tennis balls at you. You need to keep him in the back of your mind at all times. Other than that, the big dog comes down from his plane every so often to do one of two attacks. The easier one, he throws three bone boomerangs at you, of which at least one will be parryable. Try to parry at least one every time. For his harder attack, he pulls out a cat that shoots out yarn balls at you. You need to jump dash over them. For the second part of phase 1, fire hydrants that you can destroy will start homing in on you, but the crack shot should take care of them by itself, so they are mostly relevant. Phase 2 is the easiest by far, and where we will focus on getting parries. These tiny dogs fly around you with jetpacks. Try to aim the crack shot to shorten this as much as possible. Alternatively, you can use the roundabout for this stage as a secondary weapon. Parry all of the pink attacks, and keep in mind that the less dogs there are left, the more important it becomes that you actually land your shots, since if you don't hit them, it could cost you a couple seconds that could take away your perfect raid. Phase 3 starts with lasers aiming at you. You will need to reposition the plane and sometimes crouch to avoid them. They fire three times at the start, and at least in one of them you need to jump and parry the pink laser to avoid getting hit. After this comes the really tricky part, where she flips your screen. And I have two methods for you to try and beat this if you, like me, struggle with it. First strategy is the hardest one. You need to rewire your brain to not get confused by the side perspective. To do this, you can go into your settings and switch your monitor into portrait mode and play the game like this for a bit, just enough to get used to it. Then flip it the other way and after that start getting tricent. Now the reason why I'm not giving a full instruction on how to do the screen flipping thing is because I much prefer the second method, which is also much simpler and requires almost no practice. So if you don't mind looking like a mouth breather, when she starts flipping your screen, stand up from your seat and crook your head to the side like a dog asking for leftovers. I personally prefer to turn most of my upper body, but that is down to personal preference. For me, doing that made this stage so easy, it was not even a problem. Of course, I don't recommend you do a handstand when she turns you upside down, 
since left is still left and right is still right and jump is still jump. It was really easy to get used to dodging the three laser put the screen upside down. For the cursed relic, this boss you should probably do second, since it offers plenty of opportunities to parry from the start so you can get your health up. Next up is Freeze Man, in my opinion one of the harder bosses of the DLC. As per usual, we're rocking the crack shot and the hard ring. For phase 1, you only have a couple attacks. All fairly straightforward. The most annoying one, he shoots 4 ice children at you. They're always a bit apart, so you want to be somewhere in between them. As soon as they land, try to kill them by ducking and shooting to get them out of the way. Attack 2, he just pulls out a big whale and slams it down. This is really slow and easy to dodge, but it is usually combined with the first attack, and you might be stuck in between the ice children. If this happens, just jump. The third attack just throws cards at you. Sometimes one will be parryable, parry whenever possible to start stacking health. This is even more important considering this is the easiest parryable projectile in this fight. So it is ideal to get two of them in phase one if you're lucky. Phase two is the hardest one, mainly because there is many things happening at once and they are fairly quick and unpredictable. For the first attack, you need to pay attention to the animations he does when he's in snowman form. He has three possible attacks, one where he dashes to the other side of the screen. If you see this, you need to jump over him. One where he jumps over to the other side of the screen. If you see this, you need to stay still and one where he slams on the floor and swords come out of it. If you see this, you need to jump and dash over them. Now, the real problem with this face is when he turns into a fridge. This is not good. When this happens, he will shoot either medium-sized ice cubes that break down into small ice cubes when they hit the floor, or big ice cubes that break down into medium ones when they hit the floor, which will in turn break down into small ones when they hit the floor, while you break down and cry because an ice lolly shoved itself up your ass while you weren't looking. Speaking of which, it will unleash a swarm of ice pops, which will all come back and try to hit you as you keep fighting him. When his fridge attack stops, he will go back to doing his other attacks while the ice cubes are still bouncing around and the ice pops are trying to Get you. This is the hardest part in the fight and you will need to practice it a lot. Try to aim the crack shot close to the boss so you don't accidentally kill the pink ice pops which you really want to parry for the extra health. Also in the transitions between each stage you should spawn planet turrets and parry them for more health. When you manage to get through phase 2, phase 3 is also really hard and really easy to choke. You want to play this phase as slow as possible. Your main goal here is to survive while the crack shot does its thing. He has three attacks in this stage. First one, he pops out an eyeball that goes in a circle periodically firing a laser. You just need to go through it twice. So wait until right after it shoots a laser, dash through, then do it again. This is easier said than done though. The fast moving platforms make it quite a challenge. It will take practice, but it is doable. Second attack, he just throws three buckets. When they reach the opposite end of the screen, they explode into three projectiles. Normally easy to dodge, but the moving platforms make this a nightmare. One of the buckets will always be parryable. Go for it if it's easy, otherwise avoid it. If you need more parries for heals, there's always planetary. Last attack, he summons six pointy hat snowballs that go across the screen. Again, normally, really easy to avoid. On fast moving platforms, it will require some work. If you're going for the relic kill, this should be one of the last bosses you go for, since it's one of the hardest by far. The giant is a bit challenging, but it's not as bad as it may seem at first. Most of the trouble on this boss is going to come from the first two phases. And that is great, because these are the ones you're going to get to practice the most. There is a lot going on in phase one, but to compensate, the attacks are fairly easy to avoid. First thing that you should notice is that the floor is full of gnome hats. They don't damage you if you touch them, but after a brief delay, the gnomes will pop up and that will actually damage you. For this fight, crack shot is mandatory in my opinion. It just serves too many purposes here. First off, it will take Take care of the gnomes that pop out of the ground and shoot. It will also take care of the gnomes that hop on the platforms to smack you with hammers, and it will also provide a parable platform if needed when he does his bear move. So his first possible attack is him opening his mouth, and the gnomes cooking meth inside him will shoot meth clouds at you in hopes of leaving you destitute on the streets of Detroit. Some of these are parable, however, so you should parry at least one every time he does his attack. For the second one, he blows his nose like a whistle and holds a geese crossing sign, after which a flock of gnome riding geese will pass by. All you have to do here is be on one of the lower platforms. So Sometimes the platform will move upwards, in which case you should try to get off it without getting hit. Easier said than done though. Either go to the ground and walk to one edge of the arena slowly, or try to get on another pillar. Last attack is his fabled bear move. The timing is pretty tight here, but if you jump on the ground as the bear is about to touch you, then wait a second, jump up, and then get on a pillar, you should be able to get out of it without taking damage. That is really hard though, so what I recommend is when you see him reaching in his pocket for that bear, you shoot a planet at him, and as the bear is getting close to you, you jump on parry. 
you should have more than enough time this way to return to the platform after the bear is gone. Phase 2 is deceptively simple. These two hand puppets just pass a ball around while gnomes pop up from underground to try and hit you. You can tell where the ball is going by looking at the puppet's positioning. If they are both at the same height, the ball will bounce in the middle, which means the left and right areas are safe. If one puppet is high and the other one is low, it means the ball will bounce closer to the puppet that is lower down, so the area near the higher puppet should be safe. Keeping this in mind, try not to look that much at the puppets or the ball, and keep your full attention on the ground and the jumping gnomes. There's a lot of them, and it gets really overwhelming. Some of them will be parryable, but I recommend you ignore them. Thankfully, phase 3 is quite easy. There's few things going on here. The main mechanic of this phase is the boss is shooting food at the platforms that you're standing on, making them go under the asset. After a couple of them are down, one of them will turn into a parryable platform that you should parry as soon as possible, which will bring all platforms back up. Alongside this, there will be gnomes popping from the sides, shooting darts at you. Some of these will be parryable. Everything in this phase goes pretty slow, so it's fairly easy to deal with. I choose to use the crack shot for the whole fight here. You can use the roundabout and the converse shot in phases 1 and 2 if you like. I like the fact that the crack shot took care of the little gnomes by itself too much, so I stuck by it. If you do decide to switch weapons in phase 1, the bear might make you struggle, so you might want to hot swap back to the crack shot when the bear shows up. This boss is not that hard with the cursed relic. You have plenty of parries to land on phase 1, and since you only need to beat him in normal difficulty, phase 2 is way less overwhelming. You could choose to do this boss second or third. Last is the twist villain of the DLC, Chef Solvaker. This boss is ruthless, and getting him down with a perfect score would have certainly taken really long without the hard ring. Phase 1 is a clusterfuck designed to overwhelm you. There will be too much going on, and you will have to react fast. First thing I want to say about this phase is ignore the background. Learn to look at projectiles only, and focus on them exclusively. There's four main attacks that you will do in this phase, and individually they aren't that bad. The problem is that you will be dealing with at least two of these at a time for most of the fight, and at some points even three. So let's break them down. First one is sugar cubes. These go on an S pattern across the arena, and it is the only parryable attack in these phase. Two of the cubes will be pink. Always parry them if possible. The limes will just move in a straight line at three different heights. The strawberries will rain from above diagonally, and the cookies will jump from one side of the screen to the other. These can be destroyed by shooting. You can see what attacks are coming at you, and which way they are coming from by watching Salt Baker in the background, but I recommend you don't do this since the information is not that valuable and it will only distract you. What actually makes this face a nightmare are the flints at the top of the screen that will constantly jump at you in an arc while you are dodging everything else. Always keep an eye on these and don't get too far away from them. The closer you are to them, the smaller the arc will be, so try and keep them together so the attack covers as little ground as possible. This face is not easy. Aim up all the time so you can hit the full projectile on the boss as much as you can to not make this face any longer than it needs to be. Phase 2 is surprisingly tame compared to phase 1. Fort Salt Shakers spawn at the corners of the screen, and after enough damage, they will fly in his face. All of the Shakers will shoot projectiles at you, some of them parryable. I recommend you don't think too much about these and just reaction dodge them. You do need to keep an eye constantly on the little flames that will jump at you periodically. Keep them together as much as you can and bait their jumps to manage them at your convenience. I usually try to keep them in the same place, either to the left or right of the arena. On top of these, you need to watch out for the leaves that will fall on you every once in a while, but if you're keeping everything else on check, these shouldn't overwhelm you. Phase 3 is the worst out of all of them, and we will do our best to skip it all together. In Expert, there is two sauce on the ground, and the hitbox on this thing is huge. It moves around really fast, and it's generally a pain in the ass. Our strategy is to have your super charge, bait it to one corner, go past it, and use your super to skip this face entirely. Last face is an endurance test. This little heart moves around so fast, the crack shot often misses. So I recommend you slot chaser in your secondary slot, and focus on platforming. If you keep cool on this face, it's actually quite easy, so don't panic, hold down the shoot button, and you'll be good. This should be the last boss you do for Divine Relic. If you're already starting with 2 health, this is not that bad actually, and in regular mode the attacks are a lot more manageable. And that's all the bosses. If you were struggling, I hope I was able to help. If not, I hope at least this was fun, and thanks for watching.